So obviously what I was leading up to is we spend most of our lives before we get to work being bombarded with images of gender and expectations that we fulfill these images. Some of us escape that. We fight back and we resist and so on and so forth, but it's still uh, a heavy burden as we're growing up. It's not just a burden. Gender differences are good, they're fun, but we have to be careful they don't get out of hand and end up as discriminatory. <coughs> it, it can happen uh, when I was um, young again. I'm talking the dark ages, I know, but uh, I had uh, a job in an office in London, England. And I had to dress up in a suit and I would say, good morning, Mr. Jones, good morning, Mr. Brown, good morning, Mr. Mills, and I'd sit down and say, hello, Gaskillin Chambers, hotel and bar fitters. So I adopted a kind of masculinity that was prevalent in that company. If I hadn't, I would have stood out and I probably wouldn't have done well. I didn't do particularly well, I was only the office boy, but, but I moved to Glasgow in Scotland. And I moved at a particularly bad time. It was mass unemployment, especially for youth. And everybody said, what are you doing here in Scotland? All the jobs are in London. So they thought I was a complete idiot coming up from London. But I worked, I got a job in a rob factory. I begged the manager to give me a chance. And he gave me a chance. But I realized very quickly that I had to adapt. Now, the young working class lad in Glasgow, unskilled in a rug factory, has a number of characteristics. One is walk. This is an example of a walk. Now, they also sniff. God knows why, but they go. And my shoulders are like this. And there's an extra an extra factor, hold your ears, because this is it. You! I'm talking to you! Are you? Or you? Or you? So you had to, this is how, hello Mr. Jones, hello Mr. Brown. Now I'm in Glasgow, so I had to, had to fit in. I had to adapt to my masculinity, or leave the job, be unemployed, or get beaten to a pulp. So I thought, I can work silly for a while, and uh, I can yell and, and all this bit. Probably where my voice is going. I might just switch the printer. Right. I'll stop there. All right, I'm going to look at these five areas sex stereotyping of industries, occupations, and tasks. So even before we get to the door, even before we even apply for a job, there's a signal that comes off of some of them. Only for women, only for men. Men and women. We're going to look at pay and equities, the use of sexuality to sell products, emotion labor, and sexual harassment. Oh, and prohibitions and norms against homosexuality. All right, sex stereotyping. Nursing. What comes into your mind when you think of nursing? Female. That would be a pretty good guess if you walk around the hospitals. Then there are some men in nursing, but they've had to uh, get up the nerve to go and apply and, and be in nursing. But it's mostly a female occupation. Mining. What does that come to your mind? Men. Yeah. In the late 1970s, due to legislation in the United States, they opened up mining to women. More than 300 women joined, got jobs in mining towards the end of the 70s. Within a year or two, none of those women, none, were left in mining. They were harassed out of the industry because they were seen as men's jobs. Now there's more to it than just men's jobs. I'll give you another example. In Hamilton, in Ontario, in the 80s, the steelworks 
They were sold steel in Hamilton. The steelworks began to employ women. And the men had an enormous amount of problems with women being hired. No man lost his job. So what do you think their problem was? As it a guess. Sorry? Well, these, these are sort of per people who were, uh, maybe not, that, that probably factored into it, yeah? But these, had profound, these guys had profound psychological problems. They had to be counseled. Because steel isn't just a job for them. It was their identity as men. It was their masculinity. A steel worker is a man. A man is a steel worker. The job and the men were like that. So they had... They weren't going to say, oh, sorry guys, we won't hire any women. They had to help the men to adjust to this. Secretary. Any takers? Female? Two quick examples. Uh, I worked in Holland for two years. And when I got to the university in Holland, they said, hey, we, we've got the we got a, 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 a man secretary. Come and see him. Come, come, come and see him. I thought, what, are they going in a cage? What's going on? <laughs> and I went in the room and they said, there he is. He's a male secretary. I thought, what a bizarre uh, behavior. <laughs> now, a few years back, Jean, for her sins, worked at Acadia University. And there was a woman secretary who ran the office and had run it for 20 years. And she got like a promotion to be secretary in a higher office. So then they hired a man. This is a hard question, but can you guess what happened? It's a tough one, this. He was harassed? No, he wasn't harassed. No, it was a pretty good guess. It could have been. It could have been harassed, yeah. Um, no, they, um, there was no particular problems because... He did the same job as the woman, and the nameplate on the door said, Office Administrator. So she was a secretary, he did the same job, he became the Office Administrator. This is in a university in the 21st century, so I'm not talking old stuff here. Hairdressing, can you take this? You said Finland. Okay. Women. Generally women, and uh, I think we, we talked about the problems of s sex stereotyping if men end up doing jobs overly associated with women. Engineering? Men. Men. By the way, people from Men's China, are these, are these similar stereotypes, or would engineering be associated with women as well as men mining. They would? So d different kind of stereotypes. Sorry? Did you mean they're the same discriminations? Or the same jobs? Same. <laughs> One of the students in the back here keeps saying, same, same. <laughs> All right, women in Canada. Just over 50% of the population in Canada are women. 45% in the paid workforce. 26% are in part-time jobs compared to men. But look at this. 70% of all females at work in Canada are employed in female-dominated jobs, and very few of them. Teaching, nursing and related health occupations, clerical positions, sales and service. There are about 20, 22 industrial groups, and women are clustered in four of them, and in some industries there's hardly, as I'll show in a minute, hardly any women. Okay. All right, stop. So, I mean, you can do it slowly, but... <laughs> 
So this is, we're talking 21st century Canada as we speak. Now you can hit the 98% of construction workers in Canada are male. And the few women, the 2%, are mostly holding those signs where it says stop or go slowly. There's mining, so I mean it's not just a stereotype, it's actually difficult. There's very few women in mining and quarrying. And this includes office jobs as well. Yeah. Fishing and hunting. Going. You can stop there. All right. Now let's look at women. First one. 77 percent in medicine and health, and I don't mean doctors, there's a few women doctors, but it's largely in the nursing and the ministry side. 77.5% clerical, nearly 60% <coughs> teaching, and so on. And you notice, look, the, these are high figures. These are high percentages. For the women, already, by here, it's almost 50-50. The one more at the bottom, the who? Artistic. Yeah, okay. What comes up next? Pay inequities. When I came to Canada in 1984, the wage differential was 68%. So women, the average woman, allowing for levels of education and the types of job, the average woman was getting 68% of the average male wage. Here I am now, what is it now, 40 years? 30 years? 85, 95, 2015. 30 odd years. Um, it rose up to 72%. It actually got to 74%, but it went down. So th these things are not necessarily continuous. In one of my MBA classes, there was a man in his, let's say, 50s. There was a young woman who was around 24, 25. And he got up and he said, he made a statement which is a fair statement. I'm not dissing him. He said, what did he say? Do you remember what he said? No, he can't remember what he said. He said, women have come a long way in the past 40 years. So there's a good point there that... These things aren't static. We need to constantly push for them. But he sat down, and the woman got up, and she said, which is more dramatic, she said, I don't have 40 years. It's all well looking at this broad sweep, but we also have to remember that individuals are caught in these situations. All right? All right, can you tell me, anybody tell me what this is advertising? <clears throat> it's so obvious, it's unbelievable. Come on, what's, what's, what are they advertising? If you meet a rich bit of a lady wife, this is where you can be hanging out with. Sorry? If you meet Richard Branson and be a million oh. dollar uh, right. playboy, then this is what you like to be, this is what you be hanging out with on a regular basis. Can you say here? Somebody said something? This is what I get a lot of, advertising umbrellas. It's a good guess, they're in the water, that the umbrella. It's also a good guess, uh, there's one Richard Branson, there's his two women. This is an actual ad for something. If you saw this, you'd immediately go, oh, it's advertising that. Sorry? Well, yeah, they could be advertising bikinis. But where's his? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's so obvious you won't believe it. They were advertising the opening of a Virgin Airline flight from London to California. Now, isn't that obvious? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So it's not obvious, right? It's not obvious. So it's the old thing that sex sells. There's nothing wrong with sex, but there is something wrong when 
it's just women are just portrayed as nothing else but sexual objects. Emotional labor. We get paid. That's labor. We sometimes get paid for our skill. But we also get paid sometimes for our emotional labor. And it tends to be that more women than men are in those emotion labor jobs. Sexual harassment is unwelcome advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical contact of a sexual nature. I'm sad to report that after all these years of people arguing and struggling against sexual harassment, the numbers haven't gone down that much. And they're pretty rife, as I think you know, in, in universities as well. Yes, Doc? This was until very recently. These have been modified since, but these are so bad, they're my favorites. They're only my favorites because they're just ugly and bad. But this is United States Department of Defense Army regulations. Personnel who voluntarily engage in homosexual acts will not be permitted to serve in the armed forces in any capacity and their prompt separation is mandatory. It's like, <clears throat> I read that and I say, what is an involuntary homosexual act? Oh, sorry, I just committed an involuntary sexual act, homosexual act. So you can almost see the violence in this. Now, there have been tons and tons of military leaders who are gay, but they didn't advertise the fact. It, it is known and nobody wrote about it because they didn't want to get this kind of behavior. Right? This is the United States Army regulations. Homosexuality is a manifestation of a severe personality defect which appreciably limits the ability of such individuals to function in a military environment. So I read that and <clears throat> if I'd never heard of the words homosexuality before, I'd imagine people walking around like this. I've got a severe personality defect. So you can see the the social construction of being gay in these very terms. Incidentally, last week, I think it was, the United States military appointed its first gay general. And here's another one of my favorites. Homosexuals and other sexual deviants are military liabilities that cannot be tolerated in a military organization. Their prompt separation from the naval service is a century. See that prompt? Get them out of here very quickly. But who are, I read this, they say, who are the other sexual deviants? What do you got to do to get on the list? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, homosexuals and other sexual deviants. It's, it's the, the way the language is used. Okay. Yes. Quick one here. Gender at school. Stop there. Let's go back. I apologize for my assistant who is not working as well as she normally does. Yeah. Um, it also doesn't help that some of this stuff is reinforced in schools and universities. So we have university professors of which one third uh, are females. But in commerce, you can see it's, the, it's at its highest level. The salary range is a bit better than the national average by far, but there's still that relative lack of <coughs> female professors in the classroom. And this is disciplines in Canada, where you would go and study fisheries and wildlife. No female professors. Aerospace engineering, no female professors. Metrometrical engineering, if I could say it, there's still no women professors. And it doesn't get much better for electrical engineering, meteorology, demography, engineering, mechanical, and biophysics. And that's not to say any of us are particularly prejudicial. It's like if you don't see too many women in the classroom, 
you're going to reinforce a particular notion. Is that it? Oh, so yeah, look at the other way around. Nursing. There's hardly any men, male professors in nursing or kindergarten teaching and so on and so forth. 